hello, it's me. I'm Tom, and this is the the interesting book club because apparently this is a thing now. Uh, Zach, say hi. Hello, and I'm very glad this is a thing. This is uh, uh I love all your content. Uh, but this is uh, th this takes the cake. This is uh, yeah, your greatest accomplishment. Boy, just you wait until somebody reads my book. Uh, I, I, just, I just you wait. I'm planning on a. I'm I'm planning on putting it on when I make a six hour drive uh tomorrow. So uh <laughs> Alright. So so Zach, we're playing uh we're playing what did we end this game? Give me another card. We're playing give me another card again. The Song of Ice and Fire edition. Currently yeah. the only edition. Yeah, yeah this I, I've gotta I've gotta pester you to watch some of the or watch or read some things that I uh um have theories about that are currently like either airing or mid book but there's just a not not a ton of them you want to uh you want to uh, uh um you want to get that on the record so that i don't have the ability to say no in the future uh sure but like the the time frame on you uh being able to be tortured by my better call Saul theories uh is really short <laughs> And also, oh, like, one of them could be confirmed on Monday, and I actually think logistically you can't watch it all in time. Uh, I'll, def I'll, def I'll figure out something else. I'm sure there's other ones I could do. Uh, I do have uh, a Song of Ice and Fire theories. Actually, if we have time, at the end of this one, I would love to run through one of mine. Yeah. I just have to, like, throw the quotes together. Yeah, we might, we might do more. But for right now, yeah. uh, I, have, I have a theory. This one is less of a theory. Well, there, there is a theory, like, nestled among these things. But there is also there's also a whole lot of things that I find really interesting and that definitely go together. And between the two of us, we're going to get to the point that I'm at and then we're going to see if we can go further. We're going to see if we can go further. OK. Yeah, right. absolutely. All right. So, Zach, standard rules uh, as you come up on on things that I have written, I have a list of uh, it is 23, 23 things. I'm gonna roll a twenty-sided die, uh, and whatever the whatever the number is, I'm gonna give you that card. And every time you say one of the cards that I already have, you will hear a will ding. Hear. It'll just be one ding because I dinged too many times last time. But as you hear dings, I'll be I'll be putting them in. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this uh. game has scoring, uh, but if it does, you are currently at uh, you're at the at at zero points, I guess. Uh, it yeah, it, you you score in like a um a hype sense, right? Yeah. The the more you string stuff together, the the more hype you gain. Uh, and uh, so I guess you could say that the uh the goal of this game is to get hype. Uh, please get hype, please get as much hype as you possibly can. So Zach, get hype responsibly. <laughs> Dude, don't drink in hype. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, all the cool kids are getting hype. If all the cool <laughs> If all the cool kids were jumping off a bridge, would you get hype with them? <laughs> Fucking confirmed, Mom. Fucking confirmed. <laughs> anyway, your first clue is what is the life of one bastard boy against a kingdom to which Davos responds everything? All right. I I love this uh, because, one, it's Davos and Stannis. Uh who are the best characters in the books? Not as fun in the show. Davos still pretty good. Dan is completely butchered, but uh, you know we don't talk about the Bad Dragon show. We talk about the books. Uh, you, know, but... you know what? I might actually, I might actually agree with that take. I might say Davos Seaworth is the best character in the books, with the possible exception I... of Tyrion Lannister. But but Davos is really really good. Uh, I I do love Davos. There's a lot of fun Davos theories. I'm sure I'll bring up in the course of this, but. I... The first thing that jets to mind with this quote is actually not Davos and Stannis. What is one the life of one bastard against the kingdom? Everything. Out of the context that this is in, this immediately makes me think of Jon Snow. Ooh, yes. Jon Snow, notable bastard. Uh, uh, and uh, and un his one life will make the difference to save the kingdom. Un unless the bad dragon show is to be believed and they were actually married and he's not actually a bastard. I, I don't think that marriage would have been uh, held up under the faith of the seven, anyways. It really doesn't matter whether he's the true born heir or not. 
whether they had that wedding underneath. Uh, it's also that he's perceived as a bastard uh, for his whole life. Yep. But uh, there's a lot of directions uh, this theory can go. So I'm going to poke and prod in some different directions until I hear some dings. Until, until you get a ding. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I You have gotten no dings yet. Okay, no so dangerous. Jon Snow might not be the direction then. It's entirely possible. He is at the wall with Stannis. Uh, there, of course, is... Uh, it's In the show, I think a lot of the people get this confused because in the show, this quote is in relation to Gendry, but in the books, it's Edric Storm, uh, I believe, who this is the uh, quote is about, who is one of Robert's other bastards and one of his acknowledged bastards that everybody knows is his. Uh, There are some other of Robert's bastards. There there are many Robert's bastards uh, that we're aware of, or at least are heavily implied. There's Maya Stone in the veil. There is Bella, who is at the Battle of the Bells, uh, and who has been conceived during the Battle of the Bells or at least immediately adjacent to it. Uh, But there's plenty of other characters theorized to be bastards. uh, All three Lannister children are theorized to be bastards. uh, In one way or another, they're all all bastards of somebody. Yeah, yeah. I, I disagree with that when it comes to Tyrion. I have some interesting thoughts about uh, Jaime and Cersei potentially being Targaryen bastards. And I also feel like that's more compelling because Jamie would have killed his own father unknowingly. Uh, but I mean, that... All, all three of them are very Targaryen. Uh, yeah, oh, that could also just be that George R. R. Martin uh, likes writing characters a certain way. Uh, uh, but that's uh, that's another conversation. Um, let me think. So... What is the life of one bastard boy against a kingdom? Everything. Hmm. So let me let me start uh, uh, aiming for some real tinfoil nonsense here. Oh boy. Uh, there is a theory that uh, Sweet Robin is a bastard, and not actually John Aaron's son. And there's a lot of legitimacy to this because John Aaron. Uh, despite uh, trying really hard to put a baby in somebody, uh, seems to really suck at it, and is probably infertile, meaning that somebody else had to knock up Lysa, uh, Aaron. Uh, and there's one person we know uh, who's capable of doing that, and it's Littlefinger, uh, and it's possible that Littlefinger's bastard is uh, um, Sweet Robin. Which could compel. Uh, there, there's also the theory that when the long night happens, they'll hold out in the Eyrie because it's like impregnable. And Winterfell is actually like the worst place in the world to try and defeat an undead army. Uh, uh, which, you know, the show, well, we, we're not going to talk about that episode. But. That, that uh, was a very bad dragon episode. It was a very bad dragon episode. It was a very bad dragon <laughs> TM episode. Uh. uh. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> um. So now, now I'm gonna meta game a little bit to try and ding points. Sure. sure I know you sure. recently reread the Quentin Martell chapters. I did. I did. I did recently reread the Quentin Martell chapters, and I am confident Quentin Martell is alive. You also recently reread the Bran chapters. I did. I did. However, those are the ones that I talked about. It's the chapters that I reread and didn't talk to you about that I poured into this theory. <laughs> mm. Now I have to hope if you slipped and that I have something in my DMs that uh, is <laughs> going to Oh, this feels like cheating, but fortunately this game doesn't have any rules. Correct. It's all about getting hyped. Uh, also, I'm using the Weirwood network to look back in time and, uh... Yeah, I've, I've, I've headbutted an oak tree so I can see all of the things that every acorn has ever seen.
Oh, oh, I'm okay. I'm, so... I'm sitting here thinking about 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 loading the dice so that the the one that I want to come up next comes up. Uh, but I want all of them to come up, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> so let's let's uh, let's move away. Let's poke in other directions because I think I've hit every bastard boy theory I can come up with, except for ooh, wait a second. There is the argument for young Griff, who could indeed be a bastard boy, depending on how you look at it, because the Blackfires are a bastard dynasty. Ooh. A fine, a fine thrust, but not what I'm looking for. All right, then we're gonna poke in the other directions I've got from hints here. Okay, all right. Uh, which is Davos and Stannis. So I'll talk about one no, of my I'm not favorite. No, lo- I'm not looking for the bastard child of Davos and Stannis. However, if you mm-hmm. want to do that theory next, I'm in. Uh, the, the um. And I'm trying to come up with a quote here that's really funny, and none of them are working. Uh, <laughs> I guess okay. One last, one last set of bastards. Uh, there's the uh, Lannister bastards of incest. There's Joffrey. There's Tommen, and there's Marcella. Uh, and it'd be very funny if, like, the death of Tommen led to the collapse of the kingdom. But that also might be true. Uh, anyways, let's talk about Davos. Okay. And some Davos. Things. All right. All right. Uh, I'm I'm in, I'm adding a new rule here on the fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, at any point, the presenter can call the clock. Zach, I'm calling the clock. You've got one minute before I deal you a card. Fair. Uh, let's talk about Davos. There's a theory that Davos is Lightbringer. There's a theory that Davos is Azor High and not Stannis. Uh, and there's uh, some evidence to Davos having been uh, reforged or uh, reborn against uh, amidst salt and smoke. Uh, because, you know, he was in the Battle of the Blackwater where there was salt and smoke. Uh, and he was thought to have died, but came back alive. Uh, some people say that's him being reforged as Lightbringer. Uh, and other people say that's his uh, Azor High moment. Uh, Stannis, of course, also thought to be Azor Ahai uh, by Melisandre. Uh, and that's basically the theory behind that. Uh, in addition, there's like the... Uh, um, whatchamacallit theory, uh, Night Lamp or whatever, uh, Stannis oh, theory that a lot of people oh, talk about. Oh, I love the Night Lamp theory. I just, like, the last Asha chapter in Dance, I think it's the last one anyway, uh, where, where Theon comes back at the end. Man, like, oh, dude, I love that setting so much. Yeah. Oh, it's so All good. Right. I'm going to need you to deal me a card because I have no idea what we're working All right. with. All right, I'm rolling. I'm pressing the roll button. I've pressed it. You got a 20. You got a net nice. 20, my guy. Here we go. I'm nice. scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Well, well, you, well, you dig that up. Did I mention my uh, show-only uh, Asha theory last time? Uh, You did. Wait, no. No, not your show-only theory. No, it's it's my meta. It's my meta show. Th- uh, oh, uh. My meta theory uh, is that she's called Yara in the show uh, because they said because there was already a character named Osha and they didn't want him getting confused. But they specifically came up with Yara because they're like, okay, she's like a pirate, right? What oh, a pirate you did. say? You did. You did. Yar. 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 A Greyjoy. Yar. A Greyjoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready for this? Yeah. Mm. Uh, the king can be harsh and unforgiving. I. But a babe still on the breast? Only a monster would give a living child to the flames uh, and this is John remember remembering Amon. all right so think, there's two directions is, I'm thinking now I think this is uh, there, I think this is uh, his first chapter in dance I think so there's two directions my brain is going in now one is Shireen and Stannis' potential burning of Shireen, as we know from the, how it happens in the show, 
Uh, that is something that's very likely to happen in the story if we trust the Bad Dragon show. But as I say, don't trust anything after season four, because that's when I officially just started making shit up. Uh, but uh, Shireen being burned is a, a distinct possibility here. But there's another direction you could be going into, depending on whether it has to do with Aemon Targaryen. Because yeah, Aemon Targaryen are saying there's power in King's blood and better men than Stannis have done worse things than this might be the tragedy at Summerhall. Ooh, 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 Zach. You're, you're, you're like, you're, you're in the right ballpark, but you have no dings. No dings. No okay. Dings. Was I closer with Shireen or was I closer with Summerhall? Uh, it's, uh, I would say it, th that's really hard for me to judge. If you're trying to get, if you're trying to get back on track, I think you're closer with Shireen. But they're, 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 they're equally far, they're equally close to different parts. <laughs> okay, so Shireen's sacrifice uh, in the Bad Dragon show. Yeah. Uh, copyright yeah. Bad Dragon, Dildo Company, uh, twenty. Uh, 22 yeah uh the, we, we, this we this is a good time to debut the theory that they tanked game of thrones hbo tanked game of thrones because of their partnership with the bad dragon dildo company yeah yeah they want they want people to come up with a nickname for it to promote a uh, sex toy company correct correct all right uh, go, ahead, go ahead what you got what you got um, yes uh so shireen in the show burned for a mild tactical advantage against uh somebody who stannis would never realistically lose a battle to and instead it still somehow happened because show bad Correct. in the books far more likely that this will happen in the context of the long night and oh i know where you're going with this theory i know exactly where you're going with this theory oh would you uh, would you like to solve the puzzle alex uh no but i'd like to get a ding uh, a bag of finger bones Oh, I, a bag of finger bones is not on my list. Oh, it's not the uh, it's not the somebody is going to be glamoured as Stannis to approve the burning of Shireen theory. Stammered. Uh, 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 glamoured, stammered, glamoured, stammered, stammered, Stannis glamoured, stammered. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> uh Okay. So, oh man, I'm so, I'm so and, excited. And, uh, this is gonna be so good, uh, dude. This is interesting. So, Stannis is not usually the kind of person to uh, uh, burn a child, but Melisandre is like really, really like pro child burning. Uh, so as is uh, Selyse, I believe is the uh, name of Stannis's wife. Uh, Selyse is the name of Stannis's wife. She doesn't have much of a character outside of being obsessed with R'hllor and uh, burning things. Uh, uh, in in I, I thought the same thing, but in the John and Melisandre chapters in Dance, she's quite active, actually. Huh. She she's 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 got a lot of stuff going on, but 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 she's not she's not really what I'm going for. Okay. Uh, although, although so, I, w I will say the uh, a quote from Celise is on is one of my dings. I ain't giving it to okay, you. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking there's a there is a uh, quote where uh, Thanos tells Melisandre to pray harder, uh, which is one of his most badass quotes, but. Uh, So let's talk about these, this other quote in context and see where it uh, goes from there. Okay. Now that that helped me with the other quote, uh, because I gave all the context I felt like I needed on that one and it didn't ding anything. Uh, this is specifically uh, burning Mance Raider's uh, child. Uh, and uh, he, depending on your argument, has King's blood because he's the king beyond the wall. Uh, he united the uh, wildling tribes uh, into one kingdom. Ding. And Ding. 
Is that really the name of Mance Raider's child? That is the name that Gilly and Sam give to him at the end of A Feast for Crows. I hope they change it, but to my knowledge, that's what it is right now. No, you're totally right. Eamon it's been, it's been a hot minute. Isn't that uh, that? You know what? No, I take it back. That's a spicy name. Della, yeah, dies in child. So Della uh, died in childbirth. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm glad I pulled up the uh, the article to refresh my memory here because I, uh, I I don't know if that's cheating or not. But as we established, there are no rules. Yeah. Uh, uh, this might not be correct. Currently, currently at Old Town with Sam McGilly. Uh the baby might not be at Old Town currently. I don't know. Yeah, but but they're, but they're down there. They're down there. Yeah, she's she's supposed to be going to uh, Horn Hill, uh, which is where uh, Sam's from, where the Tarleys are from, uh, and. Uh, she's supposed to show up with the baby and say that it's uh, Sam's kid, yeah. uh, which right. would make uh, which would make the uh, prince appear to be a bastard. Uh, but uh, anyways, that's a potential thing there. Uh, I should note that something interesting I'm seeing in the article, as I refresh my memory, is that the uh, um, Night's Watchmen call the baby the Wildling Prince or the Little Prince. Uh, and that he was born in battle, uh, and that the wife died in childbirth, uh, not unlike uh, Leanna Stark, the uh, show and most popular theory to be believed. Uh, and Tom, I, I had to point this out here. Uh, born in battle uh, during the battle beneath the wall, which... Uh, very much uh, a messy, bloody battle, and also probably the, one of the best episodes of the show before it became really, really bad. That's a great episode. Uh, this, this is damn good. I love Watchers on the Wall. Uh, but uh, if the child was born during the battle beneath the wall, that child was born amidst salt and smoke. Oh, oh, Zach, you're not wrong. Zach, Zach, you're not wrong, and you are poking at the door of a different theory that occurred to me while I was thinking about this one that I chose not to open at that moment. <laughs> Amon Battleborn, the Wildling Prince, born in battle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's some theories here. Yeah. In fact, file that one away. We might come back to it. I, I I think it's relevant like an hour after we finish everything that's on my card. Okay. Uh so that's that's it that's excellent. But we'll come back to it. That's a different that's a different tree that we will bark up a little later. <laughs> uh Okay, well let's talk about some Mance Raider theories here. Uh, there's my favorite, uh, which is, uh, it can't possibly be true, but I want it to be, which is Mance Rhaegar. Uh, I'm just saying, <laughs> Mance Raider plays the harp. Uh, Mance Raider, uh, implies that he knows some, a thing or two about Winterfell, which means he might know the crypts. Uh, and Mance Raider, uh, plays, uh, a song about the Dornishman's wife, but changes up a little bit to make it sound like it's almost sort of about Leon Stark. I'm just saying... Mance Rhaegar. Mance Rhaegar is so not good. <laughs> I'm just saying, Mance Rhaegar. Mance Rhaegar uh, is not on this list. Okay, well then, <laughs> then there's the. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, rant about Mance Rhaegar a little bit here. Uh, there's the Corrin half hand is Arthur Dane uh, theory, which has more evidence for it because they constantly compare him to Dawn. Uh, or, uh, 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 Arthur Day, or not Arthur Day, uh, uh, Corrin Halfhand came with Dawn, I believe is the uh, uh, quote. But anyways. Uh, I like to think that that means that, I, I, whenever I picture, whenever I picture the, 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 
the ancient Dane sword, I just picture somebody like walking up with a bottle of beer soap. <laughs> and that makes me really happy. Uh it's a, it's like how a Tyra Clamster's a horse. Yeah. Uh, he came he came with Dawn and rubber gloves. <laughs> Uh, okay okay all right all right zach would you like us so there's there's some targaryen stuff going on here uh aemon targaryen was the brother of aegon the unlikely and aemon himself would have been king if it was not for some political machinations that happened so maybe there's a aegon the unlikely ding buried in here somewhere say more things about aemon targaryen aemon targaryen uh would it was older than uh, Aegon Targaryen, better known as Egg in the Duncan Egg books. Aemon Targaryen became a uh, maester uh, and went to the Wall. Uh, oh. And it's implied. Ding. Go ahead. You got, you it's, got, it's you implied got close that, enough. It's implied this was done for political reasons. That they, they even though maesters like, take up an oath to like not become king... They could have bent the rules to make him, uh, or, or just said, like, you know, they had a council, basically, that, that was like an anything goes sort of thing. They could have worked out a deal with the maesters to make sure that, like, that wouldn't have been a problem. And they probably would have been willing to play ball, sort of the implication. Uh, with Brendan Rivers. Ooh. Okay, so now now we're getting into interesting stuff. Oh, oh, oh Zach. Uh, Ooh, indeed. Uh, Ooh, by, yeah. by the way, by the way, this is not, I just wanted to, to bring this up. This isn't relevant to what we're talking about, but while I was looking this up, so this is my card, Aemon Targaryen and Brandon Rivers sail for the Night's Watch in 233 AC, open parentheses, and because I wanted to remember this to talk about. In 2018, George R.R. R. Martin is reported to have said on record that when Blood Raven sailed for the wall, he took Dark Sister with him. The Valyrian steel longsword Dark Sister. I oh, didn't. Man. I didn't gonna, know that. Find it under Aemon's bed, dude. That's what. Like, I didn't know that. I had no idea. It's not relevant to this at all. But I thought it was awesome, and I needed to talk about it. All right, continue. I used it as a back scratcher, but got harder when I couldn't see exactly where the pointy end was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oops! I uh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there we uh, go. All right, all right. There's your, there's the thing. There's your, there's one. Okay. Yeah. So, Brandon Rivers. Uh, let's let's see if there's another an obvious thing here. Uh, is Blood Raven? Uh, is, uh, currently beyond the wall with Bran. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Keep keep going. Uh, Bran believes him to be the Three Eyed Crow, but I should note that uh, Blood Raven is very confused by this connotation. He does not understand what uh, Bran seems to mean when he says, you're the three-eyed crow, which is referring to the dream, uh, the being that Bran sees constantly in his dreams. Uh, Bran specifically asks, uh, uh, says, the three-eyed crow, and he says, crow? I was a crow once, and, you know, member of the Night's Watch. Crow is a nickname for them because of their outfit, which is very crow-esque. It should also be noted that, uh, literally, uh, Aemon Targaryen works with uh, crows, or ravens at the very least. Dark wings, dark words, and all that. Maesters are known to use uh, ravens to send their messages back and forth. Because they're very intelligent birds and can remember locations. Uh, so. I'm, I'm scanning, that's... I'm scanning. Scan it. I don't think we've got. I don't think we got anything yet. I don't think we got anything uh, yet. There's a little bit. There's definitely a little more. A little more blood raven that you could ding on here. Well, let's talk about uh, Gior Mormont's crow, uh, who seems to uh, know some shit that he shouldn't. Uh, you know, like, and also weighs in at very particular moments, like uh, during the election of Jon Snow to the Night's Watch. Uh, that crow speaks up very loudly in support of John. Uh, I believe there's some other, like, that crow is being skin changed moments. Uh, Please let, me, let, let me pull up Jor Mormont so I can uh, look about his crow. 
Oh, he's even called Old Lord Crow. Nice. Or his raven, I suppose. His raven has its own article, and it's actually about the same length as Joe Mormon's article, which is impressive. <laughs> That might be the single longest article about a bird uh, on the Wiki of Ice and Fire. All right, I have a feeling I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and point out specific things. Am I getting close to anything by talking about Mormon's Raven? Uh, I oh yeah, I gave I gave you a little bit of a ding here. Okay, let me see a little bit of a ding. Uh, some claimed Blood Raven was a student of the dark arts who could change his face, put on the likeness of a one-eyed dog. Well, the likeness of a one-eyed dog. These are the thoughts of Sir Duncan the Tall. So, in well, we're now we're getting back into the Duncan Egg connection here. The tragedy of Summer Hall is another thing. With uh, uh, Aim, we we know that Eamon was passed over for a reason. We don't know what that reason was. There was a desire for uh. Aegon the Unlikely to end up on the throne, and as his name implies, it was quite unlikely that he would end up there. Uh, so, uh, some conspiracy thing might have gone on, and the maesters may have been involved. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is gonna be good. I'm very excited. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the character uh, of Blood Raven is not terribly yeah. relevant to the to the core of this. I story. should, I should note that the crow did sort of uh help guide Sam and Gilly away from the wall. And because of that, they did manage to take that uh, child and uh, get it out of harm's way because it was going to be burned. They did a baby swap with uh, Gilly's baby, Ding. who was uh, just the like the most incest baby possible. Uh, don't watch. Me. How, how am I going to phrase this? Uh, 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 Dala's baby. And Gilly's baby. And Gilly's baby were swapped. Were swapped. Period. Yeah, we're gonna put this in this corner. This is this Which is depending this depending, is the depending baby on how much corner. <laughs> depending on how much tinfoil you consume is either the only or one of many baby swaps that happens in the Song of Ice and Fire. Zach, can you hit me again with what you said about the Raven? Is that not part of your theory? No, hit me with that again. Uh, the Raven uh, kind of encourages uh, it's in and I'm getting my memory refreshed by the wiki here, so forgive me that I don't have it exactly, but in Storm of Swords chapter 33, Sam Will 2 uh, the crow communicates with Sam uh, to the Oh baby, the raven. The raven survives. I'll read directly from the wiki. The raven survives the fight of the fist and accompanies his master to Craster's Keep. After Jor is murdered during the mutiny at Craster's Keep, the raven asks Sam Altarly for corn. It seems to encourage Sam to leave quickly with Gilly and escape the approaching others and their whites, but is not seen after Sam leaves Craster's Keep. So it actually saves Sam and Gilly's life, which is interesting. So those are the two who leave later with uh the baby that seems to be a big part of this theory and gilly to leave craster's keep quickly during the mutiny after the mutiny oh 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 is that i don't know like i don't know what the point structure is but you just got double points for that one because that's not what i have uh but it's very good but it works so well for your theory oh. that it's got to be on oh yeah oh yeah we're adding it we add well now now we're pulling at a different thread here right uh there is a uh there is some sort of uh supernatural conspiracy going on specifically to save one baby right <laughs> what 
do do go on. Okay. So there's a there's a solid chance that uh um the baby that belongs to Gilly will be burned. Uh that's a, it's entirely possible and it, uh that might be, Gil, Gilly's probably actually kind of cool with that cuz she didn't want to have that baby anyways since it's uh it probably takes her back to a really bad place that she's happy to not be in anymore. But no, I'll I'll uh, fight I'll fight you on that. She was she was a crying wreck. The, from in in her whole every chapter with her and in Peace for Crow, she's sobbing because she left her baby behind. Mm, yeah, yeah. That I, it's been it's been forever since I've read anything from Feast or Dance, but uh, Feast is real right. good. Everyone listening, it, uh, to this, stop listening to this and go l- go listen to the Roy Detrees audiobook of Feast for Crows right now. But then, but then come back. <laughs> It's okay. Well, if I were her, I would, I would, uh, put that like uh, bag of uh, hemophilia out of its misery. But <laughs> oh, am I giving you a ding for that? Uh... <laughs> so is it the uh, is it the like uh, fucking uh, advanced algorithms of incest that's a ding? Um. Uh, no, I've decided I'm not giving you a ding for that. Because it's uh, the the father is Craster, who is also Gilly's father, and you know, possibly Gilly's. You know what? Like, we we've, we've been talking about this, about this baby for so long. We'll we'll mm-hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and throw this in here. This is one of the cards. Okay. Monster. Yeah. There it is. Uh, I knew that. Uh, but. I, I've always thought of that baby's not super relevant, but I'm guessing that it uh, it might be. And Gilly's baby is absolutely a bastard as well because, uh, well, you know, he Craster didn't really marry anyone. He just uh, uh was a disgusting, disgusting person. Uh, yep, he's he's a gross guy. We don't we don't care for Craster. We're not mad that he's a Craster article. Oh you oh you pulling up the uh you pulling up the Craster article? So yeah, so Craster has a deal with the others uh at the very least in the show. It's definitely uh uh I think it's less explicit in the books, but it's definitely there as well that he sacrifices his male children to the others. Yes. Uh Oh, I like how it specifically mentions that he dislikes Rattleshirt on the wiki, because uh, that's the guy who got burned instead of Mance Raider. They disguised uh, Rattleshirt as Mance Raider and burned him instead of Mance. Yeah. But I don't think anybody actually likes Rattleshirt, which Man. is why he gets burned alive. Man, that's a great uh, scene. That scene. That scene is truly messed up. Like with the hindsight of knowing that it's Rattleshirt, man, that scene is messed up. So the finger bones don't get a ding. So I guess it has less to do with. Uh, it's entirely possible monster will be burned, uh, as I said before. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I've hit a, a bit of a dead end here. Deal me a card. Come on. All right, I'm gonna deal you a card here. press the roll button you've gotten a two two okay uh this is another slightly long one so so entertain the crowd while i'm doing this okay so let me see what so keep him away from the red woman okay so melisandra let's talk about melisandra here uh, from Shy, I do believe. Uh, although everything about Melisandre is kind of a little bit sus, the show uh, and uh, the show explicitly states that she's like very, very old. The book heavily implies this and kind of states that she doesn't actually need to eat or drink, uh, and she has a uh, real supernatural qualities to her that definitely seem to uh, uh, 
confirm that her magic is something going on there. Uh, as well as the shadow with Stannis Baratheon's face, killing Ryan Lee and all that. Uh, we can tell that she has the ability to use fire and uh, fire and blood, as one might say, to use magic. John and Vale. Yes. So you ready for this? Val says, uh, as I believe as Val is preparing to go on her, um, on her, on her mission to, uh, to get Tormund Giant's Bane. She is the one who goes out and gets Tormund Giant's Bane. Uh, as they are preparing, as she's preparing to leave, she's chatting with John and she says, keep him away from the red woman. She knows who he is. John replies, if she knew who he, if she knew who he was, if she knew who he was, comma, if she knew who he was, she would have taken the boy away from us. Dala's boy, not your monster. Why let it happen if she knew? And Dala replies, because it suited her. Fire is a fickle thing. So now we need to get into the is it the fire sacrifice? Is it the king's blood? Because Mel Sandra says there's power in king's blood. She does not say there's power in some old, just regular schmuck's blood. And Craster is some regular schmuck. Uh, with, with advanced level incest. Uh, so, uh, let's talk about one of the other things that we... Uh, uh, this is, this is a, a possible ding out in the distance. One of the other instances we know of something being burned... Which is uh, Varys's cock uh, <laughs> was burned uh, to perform some sort of magic trick. Which implies... No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Which 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 implies some possible king's blood in Varys, which is a, a major tenet of the Varys Blackfire theory, which is definitely not where we're going. But I thought I'd bring it up, and oh. maybe there's a ding there as oh, well. Oh man, Varys's cock is nowhere on my is nowhere on my list. But that never occurred to me as a piece of the Varys Blackfire theory, but now I'm more on board with that than I was. <laughs> I thought I originally sold you on that by uh, mentioning that his uh, uh, cock was burned for a magic trick. Man, you might have done uh, You might have done Man, that's, that's, uh, that's so funny. Uh, uh, there, there's also... I've, uh, uh, a sidetrack, I've also recently discovered a theory that Varys never actually had a cock. It was just a, a cleverly disguised woman this whole time. Uh, I have seen this theory, and I am very on board with it. <laughs> I kind of like it, too. Uh, all right. You are typing something. Uh, yeah, I was going to give you a free ding here. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Can put that one yeah, uh, uh, Craster just a regular schmuck, a godly man, as he says. This would be the old gods, uh, because he's you know a wildling, uh, mostly beyond the wall. Uh, although could also refer to like some sort of worshiping of the others. I am uh, a godly man. Interesting. Now, it could also be that, like, Craster has secretly been a uh, worshiper of Relore this entire time. Man, that would be Although fun. I think that's unlikely. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to ask you to deal me another card just because I have having trouble, uh, like, threading a gap here. All right. I'm clicking, I'm clicking the roll button. Here we go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find, uh, like, unless Craster is a Targaryen, uh, or Mance Raider is a Targaryen, which uh, we already talked about Mance Rhaegar. I'm, I'm having trouble uh, connecting here. Oh. <laughs> okay, hit, hit me with it. Um, okay. Okay. All right, you got a three. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Okay. Uh. 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 These are from the thoughts of Jon Snow. 
Uh, Craster is a powerful man, though well into the winter of his days. His mane of gray hair was going white. Craster Targaryen. <laughs> Tom, please tell me this is not Craster Targaryen. <laughs> there, there's, okay. Tom, there's one thing I can talk about that will get a ding for sure if you're talking about Craster Targaryen. Uh-huh. Which is that uh, Daenerys literally gave birth to a monster. Uh, she literally gave birth to a, a gross, fucked up uh, uh, thing in Rego that had dragon wings and a bunch of other uh, uh, gross parts. And there's also implications, I believe, in the world of Ice and Fire, that occasionally Targaryens do have messed up monstrous kids. <laughs> Please tell me I didn't just get a ding. <laughs> oh, no, why, why, why are you coming in, Mike? Don't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, Zach, we're starting to underline... Monster, we're, monster. We're, we're getting in there. Uh, I, I didn't. I. Um, mm. <laughs> so, the dumb thing here would be Craster Targaryen, right? <laughs> I think that I'm just. I think I got a. Uh... <laughs> Hold on. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Hold on one second. Um uh yeah. I gotta Google I gotta I, I gotta make sure nobody else has had this I don't think this is your theory. Uh I'll be I'll be very disappointed in you if it's true, but uh, uh Google auto completed Craster Targaryen. Is Craster a Targaryen? <laughs> People have had this theory before. Tom. <laughs> how could you possibly? How could you possibly have a Craster Targaryen? Hold theory? on, hold on. I'm gonna give you one. I'm gonna give you one. Oh, Craster's. You're typing in black. Shut um, up. Craster's mother. Uh. Uh, was a. Woman was a wildling. From White Tree Village. And his father was a member of the Night's Watch. And I'm going to slot that. I'm going to slot that right there. Right there. And how, let's see. Uh, oh, tw 233 AC. When was uh, Craster born? Uh, oh I, I'm no! Gonna, I'm gonna say he's well into the winter of his days, Zach. Shall we say mm, fifty, fifty-five, sixty? Uh, uh, he. I, I have another. I have another one here. In a Dance with Dragons, it is three hundred AC. <laughs> you put that. One he right dies. Uh, he dies in t uh, the year before, uh, but late within the year before, yeah. uh, in two ninety-nine. Sure, that one's, uh, that one's better. Craster dies in 299 AC. That's better. That, 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 that's meaning, more appropriate. Meaning that if Blood, Blood Raven can't be Craster's father. <laughs> this is by far the dumbest possible solution. I kind of, there's, there is evidence. That there's evidence. <laughs> That's the, that's the worst part. You can make this case. I don't think it's the correct case. You can absolutely make it. But yeah, the timeline works out for Craster to be in his 60s, which is not extremely old in Westeros, but it's pretty old. Uh, 
would not be a shock in Westeros to die in her 60s, especially uh, living in a, a rough and tumble life out beyond the wall. I'm sure wildlings don't typically live that long uh, on average. <laughs> which would mean that monster, which would mean that they accidentally sw wait. Yeah, Which Zach, Mel that's Melisandre. what it means! Melisandre wanted them to swap the babies because she actually got the one that does have King's blood. Because she got the one that she actually wanted. I mean, this was all part of Melisandre's plan to have them swap the babies. Hey, Zach. Zach, ding. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. Whoop. 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 Hey. <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> I, I want I want to express to uh, any viewers we may have that my my face is just stuck in a per, uh, a, uh, a, a position that is a combination of perplexed, dumbfounded, and disgusted at the same time. Queen Solis, right there. Uh, that's a paraphrase. I couldn't find the actual quote, but at one point in, in one of the chapters, she's like, yes, I know. I, I know that she, uh, this baby has been keeping me up at night. Something like that. Interesting. All right. All right. All right, Zach. All right, Zach. You ready for one more layer? Zach, you ready? You know I always come prepared. You know there's one more layer, right? Is this baby, is Monster the prince that was promised? Monster's not the prince that was promised, Zach. Is Monster Azora High? No, Monster's the opposite. Is, is Monster the, the Knight's King? Or is Monster, uh, is Monster Lightbringer? Nope. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm not sure if Zach has disconnected. No, I, I'm. I'm. Or has just. I'm. <laughs> I, I've not disconnected. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm watching. I'm, I'm watching this happen in real time. Yeah. <laughs> Are the baby's cries uh, going to tear down the wall uh, as it's being burned? Zach, I think that Gilly's baby, who is marked by the others for capture and transformation. I think that Gilly's baby is the Horn of Winter. And I think that at, uh, Melisandre's story, her entire story, her entire arc is about reading prophecy wrong. 
I think that in her efforts to stop the long night, she will she will burn an other, and she will burn a half human, half other baby, uh, and that will accidentally bring down the wall with Melisandre standing on top of it. Ooh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what a. <laughs> what a fucking theory. Yeah. It's the horn that wakes the sleepers, Zach. Wake giants from the earth. F- wake giants from the earth. Hey, I'm, uh, I, I, am, I am at a loss for words. <laughs> so let's, let's, draw, let's draw a little line here, right? Let's do like one of these and then one of these, right? Let's get this guy off to the side and sort of like coordinate off from the rest. Right? Yeah. But this, this is the thing that set my, that put my hackles up, right? When I was reading about this theory. Right. When, I, when I, I should say when I was rereading dance. This is weird. This is weird. Yeah, fire's fickle thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Val says confidently that Melisandre knew about the baby swap. If Melisandre knew about the baby swap, why did she let the baby swap happen? Yeah, un- unless she herself thinks that her religion is a sham and she's just doing it for show or that the king's blood doesn't matter. But we know that's not uh, the case. Like, Thor Samir has a lot more uh, questioning of his faith. And even then, he knows that, like, it works practically because he brought back uh, Beric Dondarrion multiple times and then brought back Lady Stoneheart at least once. Uh, so if, the, if we had any evidence, that, and we get Mel's point of view as well. Yeah. We, we know she is, like, that devout. She really, truly believes what she's doing. Yeah, she knows that she is not as powerful as um, as she claims to be, but she knows that R'hllor is powerful. She knows that she really does have magic. She knows that she really is experiencing future sight. So she, so so this 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 dot 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 this asterisk right here. Yeah. Um, in that asterisk is the phrase "it suited her purposes," because it suited her. I think is the actual turn of phrase. Melisandre knew about the baby swap and let it happen, quote, because it suited her. Why would the baby swap suit Melisandre, Zach? Well, the baby swap suited Melisandre because she wanted this baby, not the other one. Because she knows that it has king's blood, which, oh God, hold on. There's an implication here that I think uh, you're wanting me to reveal. Is there... Is there, is there a potential Melisandre Blood Raven connection? Oh my god. I, oh no. Oh no, no. No, Zach. No. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. That's Sorry, cra- Crash, you're being a joke. That's, 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 that's nuts. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no way at all. There's no way that's where this is going. Oh my god! I do. I have read a a Blood Raven plus Shiera equals Melisandre now and then. <laughs> that's true. I, ha- uh, that's I have been known true. to indulge. So, oh my god! Wait a minute. That would imply that Melisandre is wanted the baby swap not because she wanted to use the power in the king's blood of baby monster, but because she's protecting like her great 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 niece. Or she'll just burn her great 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 niece. Wait, uh, that 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 would mean that Gilly is also her great 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 niece. That's true. I'm sorry, great 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 nibbling. We are using the word nibbling because nibbling is a great word. Oh gosh. Craster Targaryen, Zay. Craster Targaryen. Targaryen. Is that is that all? Is that all we got more on Earth? Or uh, not? uh. So this this is the end of where I ham. Right. This is the end of where I've gotten. But like there are other weird things like they bring up they bring up the murder of children a lot. Uh, yeah. 
This is from Ned. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody, somebody with an insane, crazy theory that has no backing might say that's setting up for Shuri to be burned. But like, no, that that does not have nearly as much textual evidence as a uh, Krasner Targaryen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh quote. Uh, I ask you, what did we rise against Aerys Targaryen for, if not to put a, if not to put an end to the murder of children? Which is ironic because that's not why they rose against Aerys Targaryen. Yeah, um, that, that is, and in fact, the uh, heart of rising against Aerys Targaryen was murdering children. Correct. Uh, uh, this is from Barristan. Uh, uh, um, uh, I think it was Skahaz. Skahaz and Barristan are plotting the overthrow of uh, Hisdar Zolorak, uh, 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 Danny's king, uh, and uh, Hisdar Zolorak said, "I'm sorry, Resnak Mo Resnak." Sugar. Skaha's shave paint, I think, is the one that he's conspiring with. The the Marine part of dance is confusing. Uh, his co-conspirator is saying, well, we should, we have hostages. We have these hostages. They're children. We should kill them. And uh, Barristan reminisces about, uh, about um, Rhaenys and Aegon being killed. Uh, when he was younger, Rhaegar's children. Uh, and he says, absolutely not. I will not condone the murder of children. You kill men for the wrongs they have done, not the wrongs they may do someday. Uh, and I find those things both very poignant generally because, uh, you know, George Martin likes to make this, this, this point about like the ends justify the means, justifying the means. Uh, and, yeah. and I love that about his writing. I think that, I think that he explores that in a very interesting and sort of sensitive manner. Um, but also it does imply a certain amount of child sacrifice in the future. Does it definitely imply child sacrifice? Correct. Could, could it be Shireen Baratheon? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it will be, but something is going on in Melisandre's brain about Gilly's baby. I don't know what that could be if not child sacrifice. And I can't imagine why Melisandre would want to burn Gilly's baby if Gilly's baby wasn't important. And I can't think of a way that Gilly's baby could be important if not through Gilly's baby's lineage. True. Uh, by the way, uh, a healthy amount of... Uh, 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 I, I, I started this whole crazy chain of thought on my own after I read this, this line in dance that, that we've been discussing, uh, but full, uh, not, not full credit, but healthy credit to Preston Jacobs and his, uh, Night's Watch series, uh, uh, because he did, he, he had a lot of these quotes, all kinds of ready for me. <laughs> Very well. Uh, that's uh, it's always a good theory when you're standing on the shoulders of tinfoil giants. Correct. Correct. I'm I am in good company, even if we're wrong. Quentin Martell is alive. Quentin is alive. Yes, of course. As as we know. Uh... All right. Uh, well, <laughs> Zach, thoughts on this? I'm, I feel like I'm incapable of having thoughts at the moment <laughs> after. Um... All right, Zach. Crafting all that together. Zach, that's our show. We might record another video after this. If so, uh, check check back in about ninety seconds to see if we've posted another one. I'm 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 actually piecing that together right now. Woohoo! Uh, I need to I need to find some of the. I'm I'm looking for a very specific quote that I cannot find that is crucial to my theory. Uh, Zach, say goodbye and all praise Craster Targaryen. All praise Castor Targaryen. Goodbye. Goodbye.